Hi students, welcome to our first uh, Tinkercad tutorial video um, where you can learn how to make your own game pieces for a, uh, for a board game. So you can see I've got some examples here. I've got a couple of um, chess pieces at the back, some simple ones, ones a bit more complicated. Um, I've got some tiles here which could be used for say checkers or maybe uh, Connect Four, or uh, any game that you can that you can design, and you can see the last one here. I've got a dice where I've made up my uh, my own symbols on the sides, so that might give you some ideas for what kind of game that you can design. But the goal of this video, before we get into learning how to design each one of these pieces, is just to learn um, the basic overview of Tinkercad and how you can set up your uh, file um, so you can design your pieces as, uh, as well as possible. Now the first thing I want you to notice and the first thing I want you to set up is just up here where you can name your design. Now this is really important because when we export this for 3D printing, it's important that you put uh, a name there that your teacher is going to remember when they print your design. So if you just double click in there, you can see I've already called it board game, but you can type whatever name you like. So I'll just put tutorial after that. And it's easy as that. So first rule, always make sure you name your file. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is the work plane. So the work plane is this grid that you can see. Now you can actually set the size of that grid. And what I'd recommend, if you know how big your board is for your board game, make the work plane that size. That way, when you're making uh, a chess piece like this or a tile like this, you can make sure that you're making it to the right size for your board. So to change the size of the work plane, down here, there's a little button called Edit Grid. So I'm just going to click on that. The units are in millimeters. Great, that's what we want to use. And I can see the width of the grid is set to 300 millimeters, so 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. But I know uh, I've already got my board ready for my board game, and it's 200 by 200. So I'm going to just change this, hit the update grid, and you can see that this is auto automatically come in a bit. So now I can get a good understanding if I'm designing my pieces to the right size. The next one I want you to learn is this little uh, box up here. Uh, this is your different view. So if you can see, if you read each one, front, top, right, back, this is really important. You're going to find Tinkercad really hard unless you learn how to use uh, the different the viewing box up here. So not only can you rotate it, I'm just using my mouse, you can also double uh, click on the view and it will shift to that view. So if I want the right side, I just click on it there, the front, and this is really handy when you're learning how to make your model. The next one I want to talk about is this button here where you can switch to orthographic view. If I just click that, if I put my mouse back over it, or switch to perspective view. Now what I'm going to recommend is that when you're designing your chess piece that you do orthographic view. So the difference between the two is if I just pull out a cube and put it there, zoom in a bit on that. I'm just using my mouse to zoom in. When it's, uh, pers oh, when it's perspective, you can see that these lines are vanishing to a, a distant point. When it's on orthographic, you can see that these lines are parallel um, and uh, it looks a bit more boxier. Perspective, it's vanishing to that point. So that's more how we see in real life. But we want orthographic and I'll show you why. If I just go to right view here, you can see it's very hard to get a perfect front on view. If I go back to the orthographic, now I've got this perfect view. So if I was trying to line up these two edges, it would almost be impossible if I was in the perspective. I'm going to click to orthographic. 
I'm going to select this cube. I'm just going to use my mouse buttons. And now I can line up those two edges perfectly. And if I check that on the top view, just move that up. And y'all can see that they're still lined up. Where if I go to the perspective, it's very difficult to line that up. And the final thing I want to talk about is the snap grid. So you can see I was selecting that cube and pressing my arrow buttons, this part will actually move. And for each arrow press, it will move one millimeter. Now sometimes we want to be really accurate and we want just to do a little push. Maybe one millimeter is too much, maybe it's not enough. So you can pre-select how much you want every arrow press button to nudge your design. So I'm gonna move this down to 0.25 of a millimeter. So now, for every four clicks, it's going to move one millimeter, and you can see it's a lot smaller already. Now that's really good if we're, I'll take off perspective again. That's really handy if you're trying to line up two edges like that. Now if I was to move that all the way up to two millimeters, you can see the difficulty in trying to line up those two edges. Okay, so just to, just to recap on what we went through then, uh, when you start your game, make sure you name your design, make sure you edit your grid to the size of your game board, make sure when you're designing that you're in orthographic view and not perspective, and make sure to remember to change the snap grid when nudging your design into place. Okay, so that's the first video. In the second video, we'll go through some basic techniques in how to uh, start making your pieces for your game board.